Good evening. In 1991, when Jenkins and a broom with a face drawn on wrote Highlander to the quickening, it became very unpopular <laughs> among the viewers. Due to the lack of interest in the meaning of the film, now in 2021, in a couple of closets in San Diego County, I'm truly ashamed to present a spoken word version of the movie as interpreted by its star, the late Sean Connery, who cannot be parted from this project, not even by death. <laughs> there are places I don't remember. Like Zeist, though, that has changed. Some forever, definitely not for better. Some are retconned and some remain. While this movie has its moments, <laughs> there's loose plot strands that I still can't recall. Some are dead and some are living. In my zeist, you can have them all. But of all of these Highlanders, there can be only one compares to you. And the memories lose their meaning when we introduce something completely new. Though I know there'll be a special edition of people and things that were left on the cutting room floor. In the end, I know they'll make the right decision. In my zeist, there's no three and four. In my zeist, there's no three <laughs> and four. There can only be two. It's the Highlander 2 Renegade version. Watch along. Chance, my friend. Chance. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome, as Tom Stewart said, to the Highlander 2 The Quickening the renegade edition uh -huh. watch along <laughs> we like we like to we like to give you a series of colons <laughs> i'll say <laughs> if nothing else that's right you have a floating <laughs> skull above your head now oh yeah 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 that's uh you know um i didn't see that was that there until just a second ago yeah that was there it's oh. uh it will, it will make a cameo appearance in the movie as well so okay so this is what i want to talk about well wait yeah. for starters i just want to say just this morning first vaccination yeah so we're we're about to find out whether one of the side side effects of the covid vaccine is the capacity to enjoy highland highland the quickening <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it if that uh, that you know doctors had to read that as when they list the side effects. Like begrudgingly, yes. they'd be like fatigue, numbness, capacity like to Highlander enjoy, too, Kyla the to the quickening, <laughs> <laughs> or even one of those really fast, um, you know, those those fast voiceovers at the end of drugs commercials. <laughs> exactly. May cause may cause enjoyment of Highlander to the quickening. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm just excited, Tom. I'm excited for be. my shot. I'm excited to be here. For once, yeah. my advanced age has worked in my favor. Right. <laughs> well, speaking of advanced age, it's 30 years since this movie was originally released. I saw this movie in the theater. In 91? Yeah. Wow. I guess, yeah, the, the, they, they didn't. It's it's not one that was re-released into theaters. Uh, <laughs> I do have, yeah. do you want me, can I briefly go over the timeline of, of, yes, of releases? This, this is for, a good idea, yes, for the, for these Because uh, it's complicated. Um, to say the least. <laughs> I, I, yeah, arguably as, as, as complicated as the timeline in the movie itself. <laughs> um, so this movie was first released in the UK uh, on April 12th, 1991, uh, uh, in a version that was eight minutes longer than the US release. Uh, what, what? I don't know what was in those eight minutes. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever know. Um, the US release was the 1st of November, uh, and uh, eight minutes shorter, for apparently. All right. 
uh, then we skip ahead to 1995 when uh, a the Renegade cut uh, of this movie was released onto home video. That is sh that's short order. Yeah, for, uh... I, so the, that's not the version we're watching. The version we're watching today is the uh, 2004 special edition, which is also called the Renegade. It's called the, the Renegade version. They're both Renegade. Well, they're the same movie with some updated special effects. And I'm going to go out on a limb now wow. and saying that is nowhere near the problem with this film is outdated special effects. Nowhere near the issue. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what they decided to do. And uh, it seems to, to the chagrin of, of many people like you who, you know, wanted to watch this movie again, who'd seen it in the theaters. If you go on online and see all the comments, um, Highlander 2 The Quickening, the theatrical version, is just simply not available. It's uh, It's been consigned to the dustpan of cinema history. Well, probably <laughs> for good reason, but... Well, this is, this is an interesting one. I, I have some, I have complicated feelings about this movie. So this is one of my points. As you know, I, I, I I exhaustively prep for the podcast. Yes. And I'm at a point with the watch alongs, no prep. <laughs> That's good. Cause I, cause I do, I, I, pre I mean, and I know, you, know you do. Well, I kind of, I, I mean, you know, I, I pre, I pre what, you know, I, I, I feel like, I feel like you're my underage child. In and, so many ways. <laughs> and I need to vet the movie for you. <laughs> Um, and you know, but part of it is like I just like whatever, whatever quips I'm going to come up with, they are on the spot. That's why your joke ratio is usually so much better than mine in these watch alongs. That but, is that is true. It's a bit of it's a bit of a cheat. Um, but uh, I'm, um, it's also you know, I like to dig into the 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 well, here's the thing because I have to pick these as well, I have to actually right. watch, watch the movies because. They all, because of a very specific production uh, um, selection criteria, you have to make sure they work. Well, these movies always come with a story. Right, <laughs> that's the thing. So you know, you're already you have to learn the, the you have to learn the uh, production circumstances of these movies in order to figure out whether they fit. Because our our criteria just for for anyone who's new, I mean, God forbid. Um, where have you been all this time? Where, what's the matter with you? Come on. <laughs> Living normal, functional lives? What's wrong with you? Um, this is so the five millionth pop, pop, most popular podcast. So it's, it's the anniversary of the original release date, which is April 12th. Tick. It's uh, some kind of a complicated sequel. Um, Tick that, big time. TV time, uh, and and typically one that that we would question whether we do on the podcast. Although Mike doesn't like that definition, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, a controversial or com and or complicated sequel, and uh, and finally, you know, a movie that you're going to need emotional support to watch, usually because it, it's uh, has a very bad reputation. Because it's yeah, uh, big tick. <laughs> But I'm gonna. I'm. I. I'm only gonna say reputation because uh, I don't know how much this reputation of, of how bad Highlander Two is is uh, deserved. You know, okay. well, I might. I might. I might Batman and Robin this and and say that, you know, I, I don't. I don't see where the, the, the eye hatred, towards the this movie comes, comes from. from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I have can a few, tell you. Yeah. I can tell you this. I can tell you when you brought this movie up, A, I got excited. Yeah. <laughs> and B, I had no interest in watching it before you and I were going to watch it. Because of I <laughs> literally there are like 3 to 5 things I remember about this movie and that's it. Yeah. Here's what I remember. Oh, good. Let's go. So it'll be curious to see if these things are even part of the movie. Or part of some kind of post-vaccination delusion. Right. 
So what I remember was there was a problem with the ozone layer. Yes, tick. What I remember is well, actually, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> actually, I, I I'm not going to give that a full tick. Okay. There is a there is a problem with the ozone layer. The on closer inspection, there may not be a problem with the ozone layer. <laughs> okay. Anyway, carry on. Well, what I remember is that Christopher Lambert Lambert's character created a <laughs> red or pink shield to cover the earth to protect us from the the degrading ozone layer, which seemed even on my first viewing like a big reach for an antique dealer. <laughs> But I went along with it. I remember it's also, it's also a big. In addition to that, it's also a, a big reach for the tiny satellite that supports this technology. Correct. <laughs> this is yeah. one satellite about this big that yeah. generates a shield for the entire Earth. <laughs> that just sort of like Endor's, like Endor's <laughs> shield in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Except there's a little hole. If you go to the top of one mountain, there's a little hole that you can go out and uh, uh, go out of the shield on. Why that hole doesn't, like, fuck things up? I mean, that's not a shield, is it? I mean, if there's a it's hole not in a it, full shield. that's a shield with a hole in it. That shouldn't maybe it's work. Just the, maybe it's just the hole for Superman to go out to, to throw junk into outer space. Right. <laughs> if, we <laughs> ever, if we ever need to dump any nuclear weapons in the sun, this is where he would go. This yes. is where he'd get, that's, that, that's his out. All right. What I also remember, I'm not going to say minute one, but it's got to be in the first 10 minutes because he's, if you remember at the end of Highlander, his prize is he be, he's no longer immortal <laughs> and he gets to have a regular life now. No, I, I okay, carry on. That's what, uh, so no. what I remember in this yeah. movie is that he is bad age makeup, old man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you see for no reason whatsoever to space aliens, I believe. Two? I think it's two. Come to yeah. Earth and try to murder him. So you see a 90-year-old man <laughs> battling two spry people. Yeah. And I want to say a train cut yep. off one of their yep. heads. No, you're dead on. You are nice. dead on. Nice. And this uh, just turns him into an immortal again. And then the yep. only thing, uh, the only other thing I remember is, for whatever reason, Sean Connery just appears alive again and kind of gives a, like as though yep. he's, he has a yep. necktie, kind of a. Uh, no, uh, he, he, you, you, I kind of, but you, and you've not seen this movie since, right? I don't think I've seen it since 1991. These wow. are the things that for that 30 I years that is that is photographic. <laughs> and you know the only the only elements of confusion there are entirely not your fault for i mean because <laughs> he, starting with starting with the, the beginning of that that point that you just made you said if i remember the end of highlander okay full full disclosure no one in this movie remembers the end of highlander no one who <laughs> made the, anything to do with this movie and you're absolutely right about the prize. And I had to go back and watch fucking Highlander 2. To, I mean, not Highlander 2. Highlander. T-O-O. T-O-O. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because it was so... Uh, the, the, the retcon part of it was so um, dominant. Ghastly. In, in the selection criteria. I had to actually watch Highlander as well. So he wins, he wins the prize, which is knowledge of everything. Yeah, the, right. move, the next movie doesn't pick that up. Nowhere at the end of Highlander does it says you will be mortal now and grow old. That's entirely this movie's invention. Is it? Yeah. So I just supplanted what happened in Highlander <laughs> yeah. 2 as part of Highlander. I, I supplanted the retcon in my brain? But, wow. you know, I when I was re-watching Highlander, I was like, they must say, now I can, you know, there must be a line, a, you know, a badly ADR'd Christopher Lambert line where it's like, now I will grow old with you. Yeah. Uh, but it, it doesn't, um, not only, <laughs> it doesn't say that at the end of Highlander, so they invent that, and then they undo that in the movie. So the first half hour of this movie is literally this movie writing it 
itself out of a corner that was written at the beginning of this movie, not the end of the last movie. Wow. And let, let me, I mean, we've, we're already into, um, we're already into retcon city. So let's, let's talk yeah, about right. that. Okay. So I just want to tell you that the three different layers of retcon that this movie encompasses. Okay. Okay. Go. As we've talked about, uh, completely ignoring or contradicting plot and character points from the original movie. That's the first. The second is, um, between the different versions of this movie. So the renegade version that we're watching has excised what you were, what you were absolutely right. In the quickening, it, uh, the Highlanders are aliens and the people who come to attack the Highlanders, uh, to, well, to attack Connor McLeod, mm -hmm. are from the planet Zeist, which is uh, Christopher Lambert and Ramirez is in all the Highlanders' home planet. However, in this version of the movie, all references to that have been erased. In the Renegade so, version. In the Renegade version, so the, the last two versions of this well, movie... Well, sorry, the second Renegade yeah, version. The last two versions of this movie do no, have no reference to this uh, alien origin story. Uh, so it's gone. Right. But here's the problem. What uh -oh. is what is left? We don't really know. So they're still coming from another place, which looks like an alien planet. Right. It's even referred to in the credits as an alien planet. But um, <laughs> we are told that it is Earth's past. Again, not not very convincingly at any given point. So they, so the film has retconned itself, <laughs> and then oh. this movie. It's uh, this is part of the reason why we're doing it here, uh, even though you know because this is a director's cut, we can go back and actually do the quickening if we can find it somewhere. Um, Which sounds like it would be a miracle. It does, yeah. It would be like literally someone's VHS. That's the only way we would get it. Um, this movie has been subsequently erased from canon by all the following movies in the series so as far as as far as the rest of the series this movie doesn't exist this movie doesn't exist that is wow. how deep we are i i mean in the in the description uh of the event um i actually said this is the this is the unidentified meat in a retcon club sandwich <laughs> it's the best way i can possibly describe it you just Pull a pull a slice out and say, "Is this ham?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is this like an Eastern European guy behind the deli counter going, "It's meat! It's meat! It's it's good! It's meat!" <laughs> uh, so <laughs> that's some context for you as to as to where this movie stands in relation to the whole franchise. Um, this is fucking great. Uh. Also, you know, and Mike is the host of the How Dare You podcast and is an authority on, on bad movies. This, this is a, a famously bad movie, also a, a, a big box office flop. Oh, I can't um, wait for Chu to have to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be so mad. Um, yeah, so, this movie, I think it was like a budget of $30 million right. and... 32 Made like 15 Jesus, you're good <laughs> <laughs> but no prep that's good you're like two million <laughs> off <laughs> oh man that's uh, i'm well i mean what should we get to it well i'm I, ready i mean i you know i mentioned i just want to introduce like some of my complicated feel feelings here around the issue of whether this deserves its reputation as an as an all-time uh -huh. i mean it's listed you, you can go anywhere and see this listed as one of the worst sequels of all time uh -huh. um i mean the fact that it's a director's cut already makes things difficult for me because you know as i've said on our podcast many times director's cuts are never necessary and invariably unsuccessful mm -hmm. and i'm gonna go out on a very big limb with a, a let or, or a, a cross between a cross between a a limb that is got gangrene and a hill <laughs> that i will die on right and say 
even though I I think this movie has all the, the, the this cut of the movie has all the best intentions in getting rid of the alien origin story, which irritated uh, everyone, everyone, and alienated everyone quite literally. Um, <laughs> I think that alien story is the stronger choice, not the better choice, but the stronger choice because it's left us with something that's so unclear. Does it feel hollow? It really does. Is it? Yeah. And I, I, you know, like, and you'd still leave the like. Movie it might go- be a shitty choice, but it was a choice, right? So, also, and I, ha- you know, the 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 intro was it was a pretty much a tribute to Sean Connery, not this movie, of course, um, and his spoken word version of in, in my life, which if you haven't heard, I I, I suggest you seek out. Um, you know, we. We, I mean, it's been about 10 years when we've known there will be no more Sean Connery movies. You know, he's been sick for a long time, but now he's gone. Right. And we know for sure there will be no more Sean Connery movies. And I've got to say, the joy of rediscovering a Sean Connery performance that I kind of forgotten about right. um, in, I think, peak period Sean Connery. I mean, oh, yeah. 91... I'm going to say my favorite period of his. I mean, that's right after Hunt for Red October. Right. I think for me, it starts with the Untouchables and, you know, his peak period starts with the Untouchables and ends with Red October. Um, Highlanders just before and Highlanders just before that and Highlander 2 just just after after, that. Right. So, (laughs) but I, I mean... I think his, I'm gonna, again, I'm, I'm going to make a lot of big statements here. I think his performance in this movie is excellent. I prefer this his performance in this movie to the original movie, his performance in the original movie. That's what? got nothing to do with the movie or anything. That's all about him. It is great. And um, especially, you know, he'd, he'd also just come off Last Crusade. And not only is it peak period Sean Connery, he's at the height of his comic powers. Uh-huh. And he really does... It, it's fantastic. I'm so glad I got a chance to to reconsider this uh, like footnote in his career. Did uh, you because, think because he's not he's not phoning it in, right? Like really not phoning it in. Um, Did you think the first movie held up when you rewatched that one? That's my. I, you you're reading my mind. But maybe that's a maybe you're like a superhero after you're um, shot. I know. You've got like <laughs> psychic powers from your COVID shot. Because I was going to, I was, that's what I was going to say. Like the original Highlander, it's, it's fun. Because it's the same director, right? He directs Yeah, same director. Yeah. Um, it's fun. It's silly. It's cool. It's a deserved cult classic. It's also a canon film made by Glo Globus, who made Superman 4 Quest for Peace. And none <laughs> of those movies are without their problems. Uh-huh. I was going to say, you know, nothing comes cheap, but cheapness is the aspiration of those, of all of those yes. movies. Yeah, I think I remember that it, I mean, it certainly looks like it was made on a budget, despite the fact that they're going to Scotland or wherever they're going to film some of, you know, the scenes, scenes from the past. That, so I that... don't think the disparity in quality is as big as people assume it is mm-hmm. when you watch the movies back to back. Uh, and also, you know, it, again, just the way I feel, I feel uh, having done this podcast about sequels, the things that really offended people about this movie don't really bother me as much. Like, I think, I think <laughs> mythology, I think the mythology of the original movie is fair game if you're doing a sequel. If you want to reinvent it, go ahead. You got to do something, right? That's the whole, you can't just- Something to make it different, sure. Yeah, you yeah. can't just stand still. We talked about this all the time with Tremors. Like every time every time a Tremors movie right. came out, we learned a new biological fact of origin about the, the Graboid. The creature, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, as I believe I said on the podcast, I can't believe so many different monsters come out of this one world. This one monster, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, I, and, and so in, in a weird way, I think- you know, I don't think anyone, no one wanted them Highlanders to be aliens, but when you look back at the original movie, they leave it so vague as to what the Highlanders are. Nowhere in that movie do they answer that question. The fact right, that he just they, throws them in a lake and says, go ahead and drown. Yeah. That's as much explanation as you get. So, you can't die, McLeod. 
I I don't object to you know completely re, you know reinventing that mythology. Uh, the, the the retcon problem is still there because things are said in that movie that are directly contradicted in this. But um, I just don't have that problem with uh, um, with sequels kind of trying to redefine the meaning of the original. I suppose. Right. Uh, well, we we I think we all know at this point, Tom. You're up for some bad shit. You like you like a a, a a sequel to to take a crazy turn. In the in this context, I appreciate that. Crazy. Listen, I, I am not saying there are not this this movie is a classic bad movie. Um, it is. The, on how did this get made? Jessica St. Clair came up with a term uh, to describe like bad movies set in the future. She calls them trash trash can fire movies. <laughs> like movies where you, know, you look around as liver trash. This is a She's trash can fire. Great. Trash can her. fire movie. But I also want to make allowances for the fact that the original is a is a historical fantasy film. Right. This movie is a dystopian science fiction film. That changes things. That does, sure. This movie, to me, looking back at it, I think this movie is more. There are funny moments in the original movie, but this is full on comedy at times. And I think. Oh, uh, you are going Batman and Robin on this movie. And I can full tell. on, and very theatrical in nature. Theater mm -hmm. is a big part of this. So I want to make, I want to make allowances for those like very deliberate shifts in genre and tone. Um. Hang on, I'm gonna inter I'm gonna interrupt you just for a second, just to tell our audience you can find the movie on Amazon Prime, which yes. I'll warn you about now. So go ahead, Highlander Two: The Quickening on Amazon Prime. Go it's ahead. It's also Tom. it's also on YouTube. If you don't have access to Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free on YouTube. Uh, oh. You might have to stop for ads, but uh, you you'll want to do that so that that's okay, um, <laughs> because <laughs> so. But, you know, I'm not saying that then this, you know, this movie brings people back to life that don't need to be brought back, that shouldn't be brought back to life. Uh, you know, it has the classic bad time jump. Um, you know, it's the plot is way too complicated. I'm, I'm not going to excuse any of that, but I just I just wanted to kind of get out there and say a lot of the things that this movie has been accused of doing. I don't really have a problem with. Gotcha. You know, there are hundreds of problems in this movie that we will <laughs> examine beat by beat but uh, of i actually don't i don't think the renegade version did even though it was trying to solve a problem that the movie had i think it it the solution made a worse problem interesting which is, it's like it's I think they thought, look, oh, let's do it like the original. Let's keep it vague. It's like, yeah, but this is too. What we're watching is too specific to keep it vague. To we need it, to know. Right, right, exactly. We need to know: is this another planet? Which it definitely looks like it's another planet, or is are this there, Earth's prehistoric are there, past? Are there like three suns setting in the in the distance, or something like that? I guess they cut out two of those suns, right? But, um, yeah, I guess I guess we're meant to believe it's a uh, pre like pre in the original, like I, Yeah, I said in the original, those are the only things I remember, but I have like a vague recollection. Don't we go to that planet, right? That doesn't happen in this movie. Spoiler alert. In this version of the movie. That was did the it, main cut. Did we go to that planet in the original? Yes. That okay. it ended that way. I thought so. All right. Uh but we don't so that's been removed. All reference to it has been removed except for when they are there, but they don't say they're there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you've got to see it to believe it, but you will. Amazing. <laughs> In literally seconds, you will. All right, um, I'm ready. Yeah, I, I just, and you know, just another, just one more framing thing. Sure. Just to just to remind people, and they won't need reminding because it's the first thing we see in the movie. The year is twenty twenty four. That's three years. Three years from now. From now. Great. And 
the main issues of this movie are climate change, mass surveillance, corporate crime. Oh my shit! This is a more prescient movie this than is people. A, I was just gonna for. say yes. Wow. Uh, even even the nature of the debate about climate change seems prescient. Like it's very specific. Like like what it believed, like the things that different people believe about climate change are reflected here. <laughs> and it had no way of knowing this was the case. So Highlander to the quickening called it. <laughs> it did. And it sucks for us. There were so oh. many times, there were so many times in this movie, I was jealous of their dystopia. <laughs> <laughs> this dystopia has it better than we currently have it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> oh my gosh all right well ladies and gentlemen i hope you are on highlander 2 the quickening are you ready tom should we count it down uh let's count it down all right ladies and gentlemen the everything sequel podcast presents highlander 2 the quickening the Renegade Edition, the director's cut? <laughs> it, it's a director's cut, yes. One of All two. Right. Here we go. In three, two, one, go. The year is 2024. 2024. <laughs> yep. There's the your mercy, ozone. At the mercy of the sun's ultraviolet rays. Oh, mercy. Okay, these are all the things you, you will remember this. This text worked on you. Right. I was just going to say, are we going to get some music or? No. Nope. Finally, nope. finally, we get a little. Nope. Just text. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to say. Up but front, no one knows for sure. Yeah. Don't they, come on. Wouldn't they have enough information? Yeah. What isn't is this the point, a, isn't the point of like opening. What is credit? this a statue of? Is that a statue of a Highlander wearing a dress? What's going on? It's it's a hum it's a sculptural representation of the shield. All right. That's as specific as I can be. I also like, but no one knows for sure. Isn't the point of an opening scroll to tell you what's going on, not just introduce the debate? <laughs> It's as if like Star Wars begins with, well, some people think the Empire made things better, but other people think that it yeah. didn't. <laughs> and I'm Where also are you? Where are you on Christopher Lambert, by the way? Uh, I just saw his name on the screen. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I know what you mean. First of by all, the way, this... Michael Ironside yeah. in the new movie, Nobody, with Odin Kirk. Still great. It'd be interesting to see what you think about about that. Oh, here. this movie is thinking a lot of itself, upping the oper operatic music on its own title. Not just that; it, it's about to like it's about to um, reference a shot from Citizen Kane. That's how much this movie thinks <gasps> of itself. Like, is it going to go inside? Yep, 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 yep. I remember the first time I saw that shot, and I remember thinking. How the fuck did they do that then? Yeah. It's a dangerous game to play referencing a movie like Citizen Kane when the quality of your movie's so poor. <laughs> what so you you saw I mean I had the note that um five paragraphs of screen text at the top of the movie is a lot to absorb in 30 seconds. Actually, you've retained a lot of it after 30 years. I guess. <laughs> it can't I guess. Be that. Maybe maybe they were right onto something. Oh. This movie's got John C. McGinley, too. It'll be interesting to see what you think of Ironside and McGinley. I think they're having a lot of fun, but I don't think the performances come off. Okay. But I'm grateful that they're having fun. All right. Michael Ironside, he's, uh, you know, he's put on a little weight, but he's got, you know, his face is a little rounder in Nobody, and he's yeah. got a great goatee. He's just like, he looks like an even better character actor now, <laughs> which is... Yeah. I mean, you know, we're talking about one of the all-time great character actors. I agree. He makes so much in that movie out of not a lot to do. <laughs> He's like in two scenes. 
Nonetheless, we are watching Highlander 2. Highlander 2, everyone. Renegade Sorry. version. No, my, no, no. My apologies. No, no, no. This won't be the last time we'll start talking about other better movies. We're going to pan over to his old age makeup. Yeah. I, I presume. Yeah. So the, a couple of things about old... Oh, oh, you asked me about Christopher Lambert. Sorry, I didn't ask the question. Right, right, I, right. I love it until he opens his mouth. I think he's... <laughs> He's a good screen presence. He would have been a great silent movie actor, is what I always think when I see him. For some reason, I've just always gravitated toward Christopher Lambert. I like him. Okay. Well, you, 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 as the host of the How Dare You podcast, I, uh, yeah. I can see why. <laughs> I was going to say... You would have had a lot of occasion to asleep. see his work. <laughs> there he is. Falling asleep at the opera. So we've jumped ahead. That's like, not, that was not his greatest piece of acting there. You can say that about any frame of this movie that he's in. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the aging makeup's not good. This also, is what he focuses on? Also, again, I want to remind name? everyone, he doesn't need to be old. This movie has chosen to go at jump ahead 30 years and for him to be able to age. That's two choices this movie is making of its own volition. Nothing in Highlander said this had to happen. <laughs> you've basically just, you, you've employed a makeup artist is what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe uh, because it was a thing then, like remember Jack Lemon made himself even older than he was for dad with Ted Danson? And everybody marveled at that makeup at that time. I feel like this is close to that time. That might have been 89, but. Yeah, well, too, yeah. So for, you, you're getting the idea that this movie thinks of itself as a piece of theater and that, that will come back. Here we yes. are on. Now we're on another planet, right? You would think. Right? But really, they. Come okay. on. <laughs> What? Come on, that is another fucking planet. This, I think this movie wants you to believe, in spite of all the visual evidence, that this is Earth before the dinosaurs. Are they trying to make it seem like it's Egypt? There's Connery, he's back. Yeah, Biggest we do. star involved in this, in these movies. His appearance doesn't make a lick of sense already. <laughs> All we know is that he died in the last movie. <laughs> now he says free men... He seems like a leader, by the way. He's on top of a... Piece... He's on top of a dais kind of structure. He says free, ma free men of this planet. So presumably he would have said like free men of Zeist in the original or something. There he is, Connor McLeod. Even he looks surprised that he's the leader of this right? rebellion. So I don't remember. Is it is it when they went to Earth he forgot all his memories? Is that why he doesn't recognize Connery when he first... You should have taken him. a pass on this script because that question is never answered. <laughs> so they're joining together. So this is before they meet in Highlander by... Right. Well, it depends. If it's another planet, I don't know how long. If it's Earth, then it's got to be like millions of years. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I, I, having said all I said about not minding some of the retconning, uh -huh. I do see why it pissed people off because it's egregious to like completely reinvent how they it's met the each other. Biggest fucking retcon ever. And their relationship. Oh, it gets yeah. worse. We're not even. We've not even skimmed the surface here yet. <laughs> We're not done. Oh no. We get a lot. A lot comes quickly in a few minutes. Wait, was that on was that on stage or in the past? <laughs> so 
Connery, Sean Connery's voice hangs around these movies in a way I've never seen before. An interesting behind the scenes fact about the first Highlander is that the opening voiceover by, there's Ironside. I mean, Michael Ironside, not the right. disabled Not cop. the character. But you know what? If he turned up, it would make about just as much sense. <laughs> uh, Sean Connery recorded the opening voiceover for Highlander um, in his Spanish villa, in his bathroom. That's you, awesome. it's, it's the most echoey voiceover ever, and that's all because he was in his bathroom. That's great. See, I, I don't know what's been updated or not in terms of special so effects. Is he... This movie looks quite good to me. Yeah, right now it does. The fight, but it that also fight looks scene, like, the values. is he sitting at that opera just experiencing PTSD? Is that what's <laughs> happening right now? I think the people with spears on stage are making it him remember. Well, it's a good question because he shouldn't really remember any of this. Yeah, you can't. Like, when did he recover these memories? <laughs> uh, when he, he got clearly, the prize, I guess. Because he clearly does not know Sean Connery when he meets him in Highlander. Yeah, they never really account for that. Well, they do. Actually, they do. To be fair to them, they do. There's one line of dialogue about it. If you say so. <laughs> I don't know why. Was, um... was that a snake? I, and I does don't it have know why, vocal cords? Well, he when you I don't know <laughs> if that's the sound that you make when you squeeze a snake. Maybe they just used a child's toy on set and forgot to like <laughs> cover the sound <laughs> with something. <sighs> Russell Russell Muke is like, good enough. Let's move on. <laughs> so here's the the kind of uh, Kryptonian council once again like continuing this idea that we're on an alien planet even though we refuse to say that we are They've also got a lot of Alien 3 about them, this council. Yeah. Speaking of retcons. <laughs> that's, that's, so that's how he comes back. That's how he comes back. Say my name. <laughs> say my name, bitch. I mean, yeah, it's like this, like bad porno. Say my name. <laughs> so there's some pretty big retcons there. Uh, wow. The immortality of Highlanders is exile into the future. To or a planet it... that they could conceivably take over if they all wanted to. Instead of fighting each other, they could just take over the whole place. Right. <laughs> he fell asleep at the opera and now the opera Again. is over. I mean, it's really over. <laughs> yeah, think how long it takes. I mean, yeah, I've worked as they an artist. They started tenting the seats. How long would it, <laughs> would it take to get rid of that an opera house full of people? <laughs> so immortality is an exile. Uh, they knew each other before they knew each other in the Wait, original movie. This guy can't make it through a show, but he's driving his Porsche home? And watching TV while he does it. Also, wow. as you said, Ramirez is not dead. What? 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 I think that's a very efficient dystopian image there. Homeless rape. <laughs> <laughs> you get two ideas, like, nicely visual in one, one visual. I've never in my life seen such a smoking hot homeless woman. 
but you know they wanted they wanted to show that the future is bad because women get raped and there's homelessness. So right. this kind of meets meets in the middle and homeless rape. This is a strong choice of voice. <laughs> I and ironically a weak quality of voice. Right. I think it's hilarious that Christopher Lambert had to spend like the first movie struggling to sound Scottish and now he's struggling to sound old. <laughs> this is what I mean about, you know, he's great until he opens his mouth. He's being robbed by literal cavemen. Or, well, a hairband, I think, from the 80s. It looks like, you know, in Rocky II when... Uh, when Stallone does the when Rocky Balboa does the commercial. Wait, what happened there? What? Why? Why? Why were they scared? Just because he's McLeod? Right. So when I'm watching this a few days ago, I think it's because now everybody knows he's the Highlander and he's like all right. powerful. It's not that. But it's not that. No, it's because he built this. As you remembered from thirty years ago, he built this shield to protect. So they just the world. have respect for him. It could be fish. Fish could, live in the lake. I was just going to say. this With is, lines of dialogue like that. This is their dialogue? You can see why the movie fish? has the reputation it does. Uh, meanwhile, it's just super spies who are stealing? This seems like... The more obvious choice. I would say, let's check that water. Might be some, some mischief. Nah, it's just fish. Oh, I remember this image on the previews now. You do? Yeah. You sure you're right here, Goldeneye? Right there. <laughs> I should be, but I'm not. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, the the, the That's supper. That's a good-looking shot. Listen, at the level of production design, I think this movie's good. So far. I don't know what's been updated and what hasn't, but it doesn't look like much remastering has gone on. And a lot mm -hmm. of it is just sets and right and uh, camera, you know, so there's, camera. There's nobody in the down oh. below computer room. Oh, I stand corrected. My bad. My bad. There's one guy, one guy wearing the Sipowitz short sleeves and a tie. <laughs> well, if this was, if that was Dennis France. There she is, Virginia Madsen. Virginia Madsen. I don't know. I don't know what her role in this movie is going to be, but I guarantee that her resemblance to McCon Colin McLeod's dead wife is going to be at play. It's starting to feel like a story that could easily be told without Highlanders. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just a feeling I'm getting. Just, just I want. I wonder whether it was a, banging around the old brain pan. I wonder whether it was a diehard situation where they had another s script and they grafted uh, Highlanders onto it. <laughs> I'd be interested to find out. I didn't actually look that up. <laughs> Come on, Louise. Hey, don't don't let this wash over you. This is the most she does in the entire movie. Really? Yeah. She's introduced as this like action badass. Yeah. She spends the rest of the movie walking around McLeod's apartment looking at artifacts. <laughs> this is the peak of her uh action scenes. What do you think of the Stuart Copeland score so far? Stuart Copeland of the police. Yeah. I couldn't hear it over the gunfire. I think that fire. says it all. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it wasn't. No, it's no Queen. Although they do appear, a couple of Queen songs do appear in this movie for nostalgia's right? sake. Yeah. Not new songs. 
Okay. Whoa. Wait, they were upset that he was an immortal, but all these years later, they all look exactly the fucking same? Seems like they might be immortal. <laughs> That's a really good point. Since we don't know where they are or when they are, I guess it's okay. <laughs> I'm not sure why Ironside thinks McLeod is such a threat or why he employs his two worst... His two worst henchmen, I was just going to say. To 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 deal with the threat. Like and why thing those, one and why thing those two, two men are half porcupines, I don't know either. <laughs> Is that their version of a salute? Now he says, <laughs> you need to leave. These are your space aliens. He says you need to leave for the future immediately. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I don't think time is very clear here. That is so. Um, leave for okay, the future now this is This is a retcon, right? Because I, I have a vivid memory of it being red, like a red dome. And like okay. Earth was all reddish. It's been too long since I've seen the quickening. So, but you're probably right. Maybe I that is the updated wrong. special effect. I could effect. be wrong, but I. Maybe I, that's I, the updated special effect that they were talking that they made this cut of the movie to do. Right. And he's listening to Kind of Magic. I know. It's great. I like that a lot. That song has been <laughs> rattling around my head for days. For some reason, I'm not a big Queen fan, but for some reason, I love everything. Oh, I'm a, I love Queen. That, that they wrote for the Highlander soundtrack. I soundtrack, just love. Yeah. I don't know why, because I don't like Queen really. McLeod sounds like he just suffered a terrible hernia. Mm -hmm. But. His physicality is, is not really matching his voice. No. Or his makeup. <laughs> and it gets worse when he starts fighting people. Committed by environmental terrorist Hot Woman. Be only one. I love it. They're so good when they do science fiction stuff. Flash <laughs> Gordon, Metropolis. Is that this. bartender drinking milk? Good yeah, for he's him. He's on the job. <laughs> Is this woman going to get punched? No. So I thought this was, I, I still thought this was because he was a Highlander and maybe like he broke everyone's windows with lightning. See, I'm getting a real Total Recall vibe. Like she's going to take off her head and like, like the yeah. on her face. She does look like that woman. Throw her head as a bomb. But Here we comes still have a surprise. We still, um, we still haven't been told explicitly that he's the person who put the shield up in the first place. We won't be told for like another 20 minutes or so. Well, I mean, there's heavy implication right there. But I just assumed it was because he, like when he did, when he... Good old man the, reflexes. When he won the prize, he broke everyone's windows and that's why they all hate him. <laughs> I don't know. What is that? You're stealing. What? You're stealing that, Colin. Connor. Oh, yeah, no. That's got to be you, new effect. You're saying that's that's new and improved shield? I swear it would be. I swear. It does look very... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that it does look very 2004 as an effect. <laughs> Whereas that looks like 1991, what we're seeing now with... <laughs> With the sort of <laughs> Ghostbuster 2 background. I would swear, imagine that all red.
Wait, he hasn't even killed them yet. He says not again. Is it so, just because they're on Earth? It must be. Again, they're acting as if... And by on Earth, I mean where those guys came from, apparently. <laughs> they went into the future. Miss Hot Terrorist? So it's so weird. Like, wow, she is making some huge assumptions. It's so weird that they still haven't said that he invented the cloud. <laughs> They're acting as if we got this information at the end of the last movie. We didn't. Right. Yeah, and that's the only reason they're working together as a team. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's fucking great. It looks like the there's same... no lanes in this future. <laughs> but a lot of cobbled streets. Just cobbled. I, I, I gotta say, I really like the production design. I've said that already, but in yeah. terms of those future, I think those sets are great. I won't disagree with you. And it's very, it's very theatrical. Like it, everything is staged as if it's a scene in a play. Are you all right? What's the matter? I'm becoming immortal. Oh, I just realized that. Uh, well, he can a second, still drive dude, the fuck out of that Porsche. He's getting younger. That's why he's suddenly able to fight yeah. off young people. Oh, all right. I don't know that that. I don't think that was a part of it before. Now, obviously, there's just too much shit that I don't remember. But here we go. They got a hoverboard. Because they're from the past. <laughs> they have a hoverboard, you know, because they're from the past. He put her in a trash can. She's a young, nimble superhero. Was the trash can on fire? <laughs> This is this is a a hot time for unnecessary flying in movies. Yeah. Like a year after Hudson Hawk, three after Back to the Future 2. <laughs> it is it's the time of unnecessary flying in Hollywood movies. Well, Hudson Hawk's 91 too. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. That's that's interesting. The two. Oh, now we're getting to some shit I remember. I remembered some sort of scaffolding. Yeah. It's like a set from West Side Story, like a like a, like a really good production of West Side Story. Now, my dear. How come when this guy gets close, he drops his ray gun and takes up his sword? Is he out of ray gun bullets? I don't know what the deal these two deal is. I don't know why they haven't taken their goggles off yet, because that's got to be impairing their sight <laughs> in such a dark place. I gotta say, I'm I'm reconsidering some things I thought. I think such it does as? make sense that he's if he's getting progressively younger, then he'd be able to fight like this. Yeah, I'll give you that. I think they should don't remember if that was in the original sequel or not they should have worked back his makeup a little bit more but yeah if they were gonna if they were gonna make that clear <laughs> that's the problem the problem with people watching this movie they've not done it twice <laughs> hey my train it's the stuck it's the tough stuck train sound effect is coming to town <laughs> Ow. 
at least he do, he does look a little overmatched. So I guess there's that. I'd say he's doing pretty well for a 90-year-old man. But still, yes, for a 90-year-old man, he is. That's why I think this, he's got to be like de-aging, even though visually there's no reference to that yet. <laughs> oh, goggles came off. It's interesting that he took his goggles off once he was in water. There's a lot of convenient storytelling here. Like, McLeod suddenly is agile enough to fight. That wheel <laughs> just went right over the the, the exact decapitation that you need to kill a, a Highlander or a Zeistian or whatever the fuck they're called now. Uh -oh. Or a pre-historic pre human. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I didn't remember the lightning tin can jambor jamboree. Did you catch, I mean, there was too much going on, but did you catch him already calling out for Ramirez? Oh, no, I didn't. So he must have remembered that at some point. Yeah, right. Going to the opera just like triggered all those repressed memories. <laughs> I gotta say, this I like the old. I like the overblown stunts in this movie. Yeah, and the action this looks is great. The action this is staged great. pretty well. Yeah, but it's also that's what I would do. I would just punch the windshield, and I assume that the explosions are much bigger than they ever were in the original Highlander because he's been old for so long. We'll say that again. Oh, the the what the, the so the lightning the amount of lightning corresponds to how old you are. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, I, I like it. I, I and he's young again. Look at this fucking guy. He didn't realize how much trouble he was in already. I don't. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> not not sure why or why now he's young. Well, because he removed the head. That's what happens. You or, kill or, somebody and then you have a little lightning strike. Usually in the first you movie, don't get more, a little something out of them. They didn't say you get more life because you kill someone else, right? Did they? Or is that what the quickening is? Yeah, I think the quickening has something to do with that. Uh, I've clearly misjudged this movie. Right now, Highlander 2, The Quickening, is saying, choke on this, Back to the Future 2. We've got, ho we've got hovering and flying. Yeah. We've brought the... We brought those two great movies, Back to the Future 2 and Hudson Hawk, together in one... <laughs> One famously bad sequel. The hot dog vendor is into it. Or was that a was that a guest? Was that a customer? See, now he's having fun being young again, it looks like. Didn't he cross swords? And oh, that's straight out of Back to the Future, too. How far away are they from each other? Yeah. That's, because that's... they've been flying towards each other for minutes. Who put this taxi there? Why are there taxis <laughs> in the future? <laughs> right? So are we to believe that with no other Highlanders <laughs> around, he got old? Because you need the... They're like life vampires. They need to kill other Highlanders to stay young. Is that what you're saying? So you're telling me, though, that in those last frames of Highlander, when he's kissing the doctor, isn't he kissing his, the doctor and he says he gets the chance to grow old with her? 
Maybe, but I, I didn't. I was waiting for that moment, and I didn't hear it clearly. Wow. I just heard him say, the prize, now I know everything. You may be right. It might... Hmm. Run away! Even with that, you don't need to jump 30 years into the future. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I suppose also, like, Batman, you know, I mean, that was 89, but this probably flying things are still yeah in vogue he's proud of his work well what oh yeah there we go okay so it's consistent he gets younger there he is he's calling now i hear it he's already he already called for him a few times so this can bring him back to life. And this is because they put the gold liquid on their hands? Yeah. How did I remember that he came back, but not in the middle of a performance of Shakespeare in Scotland? <laughs> this is great. This is great. great. This is great. This is hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sean Connery Troll. Shit. Tro trolling a production of Hamlet. This is great. This is so it's amazing. Great. I love everything about it. I love the resurrection symbolism. I love the the kind of star turn for Connery that the stage gives him. The theatrical theme. <laughs> Let you converse with your skull. <laughs> All of that is comedy gold. <laughs> it's great because like bes like despite the bullshit reasons for him coming back the execution of it is great it's great but there you go there's his thing there it is <laughs> I love that they've kind of they've they've kind of capitalized on Connery's like like post Last Crusade comedic yeah. vein to to do this kind of pointless cameo. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we we're only getting a glimpse of how pointless it is. Oh, it's very exciting. He does less than, he's less effective than he is in the original, if anything. Where he had his head cut off. <laughs> well, now. <laughs> Remember when I was old a few minutes ago? I'm not anymore. Not anymore. Seems like oh now would have God, been the time to make out. There is no call for this. Oh, uh, you don't know what you just said. You have not made me believe this is love at first sight. I I love I I, I love that you uh, that you're um 
limiting it to making out <laughs> and seeing that 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 would be outrageous because look what's about to happen panties off skirt up yep wow zero motivation for these characters to have sex oh The music also, does not match the moments. Just, just to be clear, the music does not match the moment. This is not romantic. Unless, unless this he's is, just. This is bow chicka bow bow. Well, she's bow, like the bow bow wacka wacka. I think wacka. it's fun. I think it's crazy that he he's already like. Started to choke her before he asked now, her what wait. her name is. Are those weird statues an attempt to match weird statues from the other planet to make it seem like it's the same planet? What's <laughs> going on? It's a good question. You think they they think they digitally added statues? I don't know. She is accepting all of this easily. That's why I thought everyone knew he was a Highlander. Because <laughs> no one questions his immortality. I'll say. I think Lambert's reaction in this scene kind of shows that... Uh, that uh, the, the makers of this movie are at least aware of how complicated this new plot is. Right. Powerless to do anything about it, apparently, but... So the first time it said I just that... love that he appeared in Scotland. This is oh, fucking great. I wish they'd done a Borat and had, like, Connery yeah. as Ramirez walk around Scotland for real. And yeah, kind of real people's reactions. Not that this scene isn't already great. Right, like him look, looking at him, looking, <laughs> looking at, himself looking at himself in the security <laughs> camera. <laughs> Is he going to be saying shithead the whole movie? Yeah. Oh, and worse. <laughs> He's pure like time traveler, fish out of water in this movie. He's a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court, basically, for the rest of the What are you doing at a suit store? No. You don't take off these clothes. If I took one look at him, I would I would say, do you have any money? <laughs> ah, the screenwriters realize that. Look what look how they're about to solve that problem. It's that guy who runs the suit store can clearly tell that that's a priceless that that's, heirloom. That, that, <laughs> that this is nothing but authentic. I am amazed and a little impressed that they were able to incorporate a dressing up montage in a movie like this. Right? I mean, this is like no clearer indication that this movie was made in the early 90s than this montage. <laughs> right? I wonder if this counts. <laughs> and it's funny. It is. I wonder if this counts for Lady Chu when we did Man of the House, she mentioned she loves a good grooming montage for reasons I can't understand. You, you have to show her this movie. You have to do this <laughs> on How Dare You podcast. I've got my golf clubs. Thank you for the suit that makes me look fat, even though I'm one of the most attractive men in the world. Airport.
having so much fun with this. I, I love watching him. My. <laughs> I just thought of something that ruins this whole sequence for me. Oh no. If well, if he's coming from, back to this sequence? No, if he's <laughs> from all the stuff with him like being surprised by everything in Earth's future only makes sense if if he's not from an alien planet. <laughs> right? So if he's a space alien who traveled here through lightning, he would not be surprised at flying in a plane. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. If his planet did not have transportation, well, of course, they seem to have hoverboards, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, exactly. They've already got the power of flight <laughs> on his planet. Planet. <laughs> on not Zeist. <laughs> I'm just going to call it not Zeist from now on. Sounds like a fucking toothpaste. <laughs> if, they ever, if they ever reissue the reissue and add Zeist back in, they should have a little like a, a sticker on the on the on the Blu-ray that says like now with Zeist. <laughs> I wish you could have seen it because you and I are in love now. Yeah, I know. Trash alley fucker. <laughs> Favorite New York doll stung. <laughs> Just a trash alley fucker. <laughs> Here we are back in Not Zeist. How does he get to watch this on television? He's yeah, he's watching he's watching the rushes of the movie. Apparently you can't send incompetent half porcupine people to do a man's job. <laughs> or an alien's job. I don't right. know. The psychic cook. I was going to just say, am I seeing what you're seeing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's sub Robocop future TV satire, but it's right. not altogether bad. I think this movie's proving itself to be fairly pantomime in tone. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's not out of place. That's what I mean about like the science fiction part of it. Like, you can get away with a lot doing this kind of that's true. future shit. Wow, that train's taken a long time to pull into the station. Right? Is that where maybe the eight minutes of the original UK release was just that train <laughs> and they cut it down to that one minute of pulling into the station? <laughs> well, he appears a little less gracefully than his friends did. That's right. On a on a subway. <laughs> He's having fun. He is. It makes a difference. Does he even know what Kansas like, and is? This guy looks like he's from your planet. <laughs> this is one of the moments where I got like jealous of their dystopia. I'm like, this guy's got a camera in his eye. He can right? watch TV in. That's so much better than watching it on my phone. I mean, as long as no one pulls it out of your head like, like that guy just did. Yeah, right. So long as it doesn't cause your murder I'm 
So I'm going to put you down and do it myself. Why did he say that thing about Kansas and how does he know where Kansas is? I was going to, I was just thinking the same thing. Is it a Wizard of Oz reference? How does he know what that is? Can he watch that how, on his TV? Exactly. Too? How does he know? He can watch it on his TV in on Not Zeist. <laughs> this is he gets TCM on his <laughs> on his Not Zeist station. Let me tell you what happens when a mother's baby carriage gets away from her. She doesn't slow up and say, "Ah, it's too far ahead." <laughs> it's a little bit recent, but. In, in this movie's timeline, but do you think that was an Untouchables reference? I was, yeah, I was just going to say that maybe that's an Untouchables thing. The one scene, the famous scene from that movie that Sean Connery wasn't in. Right. Let me tell you something. Subway trains don't go 400 miles per hour. Well, it's powered by... Zeiss light, not Zeiss lightning. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to go off the tracks. What I'm saying is it's still going. The second they go around a turn, they're fucked. <laughs> you saying this movie hasn't considered physics? You're right. And we're not I even was... at the t- we're not even at the tiny satellite yet. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm enjoying though, the unnecessary violence. There's a few moments like this in the movie that made me think that they've really embraced like the hyper-violent early 90s uh, kind of Hollywood feature. Oh, because I was just... Even you know, before that, that Bug is... Eyes, I was going to say, we got some serious body horror going on, yeah. but it's still comedic. It's like I'm continually amazed at the level of production values versus right. the, the lack of taste and quality. Last stop. Oh, dang it. I was, <laughs> I was right there. <laughs> Come on. I just missed it. At least he said it. Yeah. At least you didn't Mandela affect it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the movie where everything you think you've Mandela affected into the movie really happens in the movie. <laughs> I'm also jealous of the fact that this this dystopia did something about climate change and we have still yet to take action on that. That's amazing. They basically solved climate change. Getting young. I would say get a, get some better beans. Is he even going to talk to him about how young he is? All right. A facelift. This man just saw him. That night. Falling asleep in his own box. He was old. And also, this man is a scientist. Right. (laughs) He is a man of science. Oh, is is this the power plant model? This power plant model looks like the one that Homer makes in that episode of The Simpsons with Frank Grimes. And I feel these racing stripes are (laughs) pretty sharp. (laughs) I was going to say, the science is probably as credible as that model that yes. I made. Again, i just like to remind everybody, this man is an antique dealer. <laughs> Not, well, clearly he's moved, he's moved up in the world. Yeah. It's interesting because he, sh- while they're not mentioning the prize, which is knowledge of all things, as far as I can tell, he seems to be acting as if a man who has knowledge of all things, mm-hmm. not just antiques. Here we go. There you go. That's the satellite that's 
generating an entire shield for the Earth. <laughs> That's that just that one satellite. Now, do you think that was level one of the basement or level two that was infiltrated? Had to be level one, because level two was empty, except for Sipowitz. Well, there's there's Rennie Harlan operating the <laughs> the controls. This is the entire cast and crew of Die Hard Two Die in Hard this two. movie somewhere. Let's beam all these, uh, all this power up to that tiny satellite that can clearly take it all. That can clearly take it. <laughs> Used to be red, I swear to God, was red. <laughs> I believe you. I, I really genuinely believe you because that solves the mystery of what special effects have been updated. <laughs> I think it would have been, they were embarrassed that it was pink. Why do I have to be pink shield? <laughs> I want to be Mr. Blue. <laughs> Blue shield or I uh... be brown, anything. <laughs> oh, here's oh, our dude. second act villain. So that flashback tells us everything except how Colin McLeod became involved in in this project, project at all. <laughs> It's kind of what we needed to know. Are they typing to each other because they know that the place yeah. is bugged? Mm -hmm. All right. Of course you'd have to go above the shield. What do you mean where? Center of the earth, jackass. Wait, what? Why are That's... they going to a specific spot? Yeah, a specific spot. So this is this is where it starts to seem less progressive because we're having having acknowledged that climate change was about to destroy the earth. Mm -hmm. We're now saying that it kind of just fixed itself and that energy companies are now running a scam. <laughs> right. By charging people for using the shield. Which is which is kind of what that, conservatives think, right? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it could be of our time for sure. Does Alan die? I feel like Alan's going to get murdered. See, so yeah, another sort of... Whoa. What? Did that accent come out of nowhere? Who's? McGinley's. Wasn't he British just five seconds ago for the tiniest of moments? Yeah, I think I think he's playing with that, yeah. Maybe just being around Christopher Lambert fucks up your accent. <laughs> just being in the same room with him. It's like, is he French? Is he German? Is he Scottish? Here are some contemporary dancers who make up the homeless community. They must be the kids from fame who have... It's so <laughs> weird that, like, again, that bad future movie, which can only represent street gangs in terms of like circus performers. <laughs> yeah, metal's gonna last forever. Wow, it's never More not statues. gonna be popular. Statue with sword.
for the record, he's never acknowledged he's in the music business. I wish they got a better actor to play this taxi driver. I can't tell if he's happy or sad about everything right? that's happening. Maybe oh, again, maybe that's Michael Ironside's fault. He's not making it clear. <laughs> he's not. He's having so much fun. It's hard not to join in. <laughs> He does seem happy. It's like, this is not collateral. I'm just going to kill you. Yeah. I'm not You're not going to drive me around to do evil things. Michael Ironside did not have a talk with Tom Cruise from Collateral before this. Uh-huh. Because this guy could have driven him around all night before he killed him. Well, I gotta say, he's he's doing he he's doing. I know, I know he doesn't have to get there from Scotland, but he he's doing a better job getting to where he needs to be than uh, <laughs> right. than Connery. Yes, because I believe Connery's still on that plane. The, the there he is, not... yeah, he's still on that plane! <laughs> I was going to say, the movie hasn't told us otherwise. This movie is also kind of unnervingly predicted how train travel, plane travel will eventually go back to like sardines in a tin. In right. our era, like it's, it's it's weird. I could tell you this is not the video you'd be watching on a play. <laughs> it's a great bit. This is why I think this movie is like full on comedy at times. <laughs> it clear, yeah, no, that's slapstick right there. Yeah. Especially in the Connery scenes. I think that's where it's most successful. <laughs> that's literally just Michael Ironside taking a breath. Yep. That made it into the movie. <laughs> it's just like a guy going onto a ledge so, going, <sighs> When Michael Ironside goes to the premiere of this movie, is he pleased, displeased, or just surprised that this scene made it? You left that in? Right? Uh oh he might have just been Sean Connery filming this. <laughs> yeah, there's never not a place for a Sean Connery eating pussy joke. <laughs> it does feel like something out of a late Bond film, I'll give you that. Oh. But yeah, you're right. It might just have been, it might just have filmed Connery's journey over from, might, from Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> like I like said, I, that's how, I have that's a feeling how, the director said, Sean, we might just need something funny. Do something, yeah. do something. I was going to say, you should have just done it all as a documentary. I would have loved it if there was like an interactive version of this movie where you could just opt out of the movie and watch Sean Connery's entire journey in real time. <laughs> <laughs> is this wife from the first movie? Yeah, it sure is. Not the same actor, but I don't need to tell Clearly. you that because she's got bandages and scars. And, exactly. I started to think at this point that... So this is the motivation. They're showing us the motivation. She says, do something oh, to stop this. I thought, you, I thought you were really psychic there. But yeah, that's true. But what is also true, or what's also I suspect is the truth, is they couldn't get that actress back 
they needed to get the new actress um, like in bandages and scarred, and they worked back from that in creating this ozone layer yeah, storyline. The entire line. ozone story. Yeah, since that storyline comes out of nowhere, and here they're they're uh, referencing a shot from Gone with the Wind, the famous hospital scene again. Right. You're you're referencing way above your station here, Highlander <laughs> to the quickening. <laughs> Punching above your weight. Yeah. At least Highlander sort of has an awareness of how cheap and crappy it is. What the fuck? Speaking of the original, they're trying to, they're, they're really trying to connect the dots here with the original movie. Hmm. So very dead. He should have said sick burn right after that. She's so very dead, sick burn. Well, it has him going to a legend breathing in the movie, so that wouldn't be out of place. <laughs> Okay. Does he mean that scientifically? Remember, that's from the original. That's from the original, yeah. yeah. So they're trying to connect the dots where they can. Yeah, but they're each seven miles apart. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see a dot over... Th I'm not sure, though. Looking off in the horizon. It could be an alien planet. Might be the past. I'm not sure. <laughs> also, that's, a, that's holy ground? That looks like yeah, a construction yes. site. <laughs> this is another thing I associate with early 90s movies is the spiral staircase shot. I don't know why. Feels very final analysis. Or or Batman, the Batman, the Tim yeah. Burton Batmans, or Tim Burton anything. <laughs> right. He's a football star, just like Clark <laughs> Kent in Superman yep. 4. Oh, see, I thought she was going to go for that bottle of wine. That doesn't look photoshopped. He's leaving out an awful lot of evidence of his immortality. And his Scottish accent's not got better in, in voiceover. <laughs> five years later he sound whenever he tries to do Scottish he sounds like Werner Herzog <laughs> <laughs> there's a nice uh, workaround for not being able to get BD Edney back yeah. by having a painting of her that looks nothing like her <laughs> so they don't even have to pay for like <laughs> pay for like actor um, she, reappearances. She looked at that. She looked at that picture and then looked distraught. Like, is that why he trash alley fucked me? Yeah, she's right too. Right, that's the only reason. It's like if I didn't have permed hair, he wouldn't have sexually assaulted me. <laughs> that's what I mean about her looking at artifacts for most of the movie. Yeah. That's that's it for her now, really. We seem to have a lull here, Tom, so I have some unfortunate news. What's that? In my haste to, to get into the closet this morning, I forgot to bring my power cord. Okay. And I'm going to run out of juice soon. Okay. Should we pause? Oh, not yet. 
We can. Wait, We're... what? That guy's head would have been separated from his body for that long of a hanging. We we can, or I can vamp while you get your power cord. Up to you. Either way. Okay, I'll I'll continue vamping. All right. So. Sorry for the noise, everybody. Scaffolding. Well, it's a scaffolding. <laughs> <laughs> this movie had a deal on scaffolding. I'll be back. Wrong movie. Chance is going to miss uh, the fake out uh, reveal of Ramirez. Oh, no, it's not. Wow. I really thought it was going to be Ramirez. It was a double fake out. It really is Michael Ironside. It seems early for them to be to be fighting. It's like 40 minutes left in the movie. Oh, this is the first sword play we've seen in, in again, this movie doesn't need Highlanders. Kind of funny that Mike's missing <laughs> the most Highlander part of a movie which doesn't really have Highlanders in it. What I miss? Basically everything that connects this with the notion of Highlanders. All right. So nothing but, important. <laughs> just, you know, a key, a key sword battle. This feels like it's happening early. Yeah, I we're have like no halfway. notes on. I, I, still I have to say we're halfway. No, we're, oh, we're past halfway. halfway. But this definitely isn't their final duel. No. But I was all prepared for it to be a fake out reveal of Ramirez, but it's not. He's still on that plane. <laughs> He's been on that plane for forty-five minutes of that's, the film. That's amazing. Just write it, baby. You're immortal. You do what you want. Yeah, that's another fuzzy thing I've never been able to figure out. Like, wouldn't you just go around in a helmet the whole time? Well, there's still your neck below that helmet. You could wear it down, like you have it like a turtleneck, like have a steel turtleneck. Steel, yeah, like you know those gloves you wear to not, <laughs> or those chain link suit, suit, the chain link suit from Jaws 3D. Yeah. Put that on your neck. But is it like, by the way, I'm surprised about how casually the decapitation rule was introduced in the original Kylander. It is literally like one cutaway. Lose your head, it's all over. That's it. <laughs> that's all we have. Like, that's the only. Inf so, again, Highlander 2 is not. Uh, is no better or worse. It's than just the first going movie. with the tradition of, of the franchise. Yeah, of like not giving enough weight to important stuff. I also is like she that dressed Christopher as Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, she is. I also like though that Christopher Lambert not once has said, Who the fuck is Ramirez? <laughs> <laughs> I called for him like I called oh, for you so like long a whole ago. Day ago. <laughs> I think he does ask him that, though. You know what? I think you've just anticipated in a line of dialogue again. No. Yeah. I am remembering one more memory that I forgot to mention. <laughs> but I think they cut it, because I think it's in the, the church scene, sacred ground scene. Because mm. I thought, I think in the original there was more hay made out of, you know, 
I, I was old, dumbass. I was about to die. Then you send two jackasses, and here we are, idiot. Interesting. I thought you were going to say they they like broke out into a musical numbers. We're aliens. We're aliens. We're aliens from Zeist. I just got my skull oh, no. You lost your skull. I appeal to have lost. Uh, she'll be Fucking, on my way and leave I, you to converse I with your skull. I gotta tell you, still Connery falling down in a production of Shakespeare's Hamlet. Just, just delightful. It's like... I got to say, I I really give the screenwriters or you know whoever concocted that credit, Full credit. for finding Full the perfect credit. the perfect way to get him back in, and also disguise the fact that it doesn't make a lick of sense. Yeah, <laughs> like that's like no one cares. So he's landed. I take it. There he is. Do you have a tip for the taxi driver? I'm out of earrings. <laughs> you know that scene? Have we talked about this before? You know that scene in Zardoz when he's in his, I mean, he's in his red diaper the whole time. Yeah. But he's, he's uh, like chained against a wall, uh -huh. <laughs> like hanging on a wall and all the women are surrounding him. Yeah. I remember watching that and actually, it was Matt hmm. from a from an upcoming Everything sequel Ooh. episode. Exclusive. It was Matt Aldrich that said, "Do any of you know what a queef is?" <laughs> as, as supplemental dialogue. Well, he talks about vaginas in this movie. Yeah. Edible vaginas. They both do not seem as spry as they did in the first movie. <laughs> oh yes, it would be a mistake to kill you. Even though I'm not sure whether I would get younger if I did. Yeah. It is no longer clear. Was this really at play? Was he, was he, a, was there a chance he might cut off his fucking head? They, they both there? play it that way, but yeah. that really would not make sense. <laughs> Although it's not as if he has anything else to do in the movie. If yeah. he'd have died there, he would have had as much impact on the plot as he does. <laughs> Did you even realize there were police? Why would he know about police? <laughs> oh, you mean like the uh, militia on Zeist or whatever yeah. we're calling it? Every time, every time we see the scientist it's, guy, somebody I, turn on a fucking light in this room. This is the prime era for like dystopian science fiction, where everyone is seen <laughs> through blue lights. In, yeah. in the shadows of blinds. It's like from Blade Runner till like, I don't know what. I keep thinking that that's Jerry Stiller, but it's not Jerry Stiller. <laughs> <laughs> the late Jerry Stiller. I don't know why John C. McGinley's performance is pitched at the same level as Michael Ironside's. <laughs> right? It feels like, you, sh you know, one or the other. I'd like a scene where they meet each other and become lovers. Like soulmates. You're not entirely... Uh... Oh, God. <laughs> You're not entirely wrong about Am that. Am I going predictive again? You went very predictive. They certainly joined forces. Oh, great. Again, what is this, a giant jail? Put, turn on a light. <laughs> but 
but it's night everywhere because <laughs> of the shield. People are indoors in the dark. Turn but, on but, lights. But apparently, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Ironside. Great. If I was an extra in that scene, I'd turn to another extra and say, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> I like that McGinley was still making a businessman speech as his friend was being choked to death. <laughs> There can be only one yeah. scenery chewing villain <laughs> at any given time. <laughs> Good recovery from the choking. Now, again, this man was upset that Lambert and Connery were immortals, but I'm just saying. Does he know what the draft choice is? <laughs> and Kansas, does he just sit watching the the Earth TV the NFL station draft? all day long? <laughs> There's some really good shows on here. Have you seen World War II? He was really interested, like this around this year. He's like, are, are the Cowboys going to get Troy Aikman? Let's say McGinley's enough of a good actor to know to take it down when Ironside's in the room. Right. I wanted one person in the room to say, from out of town? or How would he know what a business is? <laughs> Great. <laughs> what the fuck's a yeah, Highlander? That's great! <laughs> and this is like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. We're in different movies. We really are. You're in, you've walked into the wrong movie. <laughs> He's full on fish out of water. Mm-hmm. What's this blue shield that used to be red? Well, this, the, the globe, it's... Are you remembering the... The, 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 the globe red? is clearly showing the utility of the shield. It's like the Hudsucker proxy is like, you know, <laughs> for Earth. For Earth. <laughs> Just, that doesn't show anything, but it, what does that show scientifically by putting, yep. encasing a globe in a, like a transparent shell? It's like, yeah, no, we get the idea. It's how we're going to do that. That's the problem. <laughs> we get it conceptually. Trust me, I can picture it in my mind. <laughs> Oh my God, when he smashed that and then they cut to establishing shot of the shield. Yeah. I was kind of hoping it was gonna do like that thing was the control. Mm. Can't he just say, I built the shield, let me in? Can you hear what he just said? No. Hit it, dude. <laughs> Wait, who said that? Connery. Wow. Yeah. I'm upset I missed that. They really can't think oh. of... They can't think of anything to give Connery to do. 
Except to say, hit it, dude. Yeah, more hyper-violence. It's interesting. But it's all okay. It made me think that this is a kind of movie that that Tarantino would like. You know, yeah. one of those movies that everyone says is shit until Tarantino comes out and says he likes it. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I His know. legs it's took so the violent. brunt. Woo. And the machine gun made little nipple holes in his shirt. Yep. This is a good ruse. I mean, their objectives are unclear, but <laughs> <laughs> but the the process of getting into the place, that's clever. We're gonna say that none of those bullets struck her. Do I have that right? Because she was in the trunk. I'm of, just saying. The, of the antique Porsche. I which don't can think deflect bullet holes. We're not still in the Porsche. That was something else. That wasn't the Porsche? No way. I love this choice of accent. Ah, uh, here we go. That was good. They got up at the same time. I I love that. I just I would just love to be there as Connery and Lambert lying like uh to, like head to toe. Go three, two, one, and then sit up. <laughs> God bless that actor. Yeah. It's like they're auditioning to be in a sitcom spinoff. Mm -hmm. McLeod and Ramirez. Yeah. Like live like a like a, an apartment share comedy or something. <laughs> they were the original casting for Joey and Chandler and Friends. Little known <laughs> fact. Little known fact. <laughs> wow, that wow. was a lot of a lot of dialogue. Yeah, for one person to say, and effectively to say, "You go that way, you go that way," <laughs> like it was Scooby Doo. <laughs> Wait, what? Are there families living down there? Yeah, this is the prison. The Max prison. All right, then. I know, it looks like a sewer. Yeah. <laughs> the, the problem's not yours. It's the, the, it's the movies. Jerry! Where's Ben? <laughs> Careful, he's going to stop short on you. I think he's going to die before he says the final digit of that latitude. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> wow. That was unceremonious. He didn't even do a... Uh, yeah. It was just plump. If I hadn't seen that actor in a Kerber enthusiasm about 15 years later, I'd assume the actor died. <laughs> Let's just share the villain lines. We'll do we'll alternate. <laughs> right. Uh-oh, Willy Wonka. Yeah, this isn't good. Don't don't drink any lemonade. We got a Temple of Doom coming. 
Holy I, shit. I wrote that in my new notes, taking action sequences right out of the Indiana Jones movie playbook. <laughs> and there's a truck fight as well. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually not a bad shot. I that made no, me viscerally I, I, feel. Visually, I have no problem with this movie. Mm-hmm. Just hold your fucking sword up. The penitent man. Only the penitent <laughs> man. Wait, no, that's the other one. My bad. What am I doing here today? Which sequel <laughs> is this? <laughs> Which movie that people will later complain about is this? Isn't that just like, isn't that just like a Highlander? <laughs> Brings a gun to a sword fight. Wait, what? That's the Zeist way. <laughs> I can sacrifice myself again, just like I did in the first movie. What a champ. His role in the movie is to come back to life and then die again. Pretty thankless. I'm feeling the magic. This is, of course, the, the scene that they played at Sean Connery's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, nothing from the Bond movies? No, just Highlander 2. Okay, okay. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> The chronology of death and age is now meaningless. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come back if they pay me enough. Dude, that was Lambert's Oscar moment right there. If they agree to film me entirely in my villa, I'll do the next one. I can't remember. I want to say it's Stephen Fry who said that you know there's a number of a number of phrases that you only hear in movies and never in real life, and I think Showtime is one of them. <laughs> right. I get them mixed up with the because Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks, when they were uh, both widowed and um, used to spend their evenings together watching movies, they would rather like our specific selection criteria. Right. Theirs was it had to be a movie that had the line uh, secure the perimeter <laughs> and or get some rest. <laughs> but <laughs> that was their only criteria. But um, but Showtime is definitely one of those. Like that's great. Who the hell says Showtime right. before like an operation? Yeah, we're still not out of the Indiana Jones playbook. No. <laughs> well, he's doing some Ben Affleck Batman punching there. <laughs> <laughs> he's like doing his sex move on Michael Ironside. By the Go way, these are the two choke. immortals. None of this matters. <laughs> Pull out your fucking swords. Go ahead, break my fingers. They're gonna they're gonna work. Also, like I, again, it doesn't say anywhere that you have to decapitate someone with a sword, right? So right. you could just go, you could just kind of throw a you a, can do it uh, with uh, trains and wires, obviously. Yeah. You just throw like an industrial like circular blade in the direction of a Highlander, you'll probably get them. Like it doesn't need to be as elegant as a sword fight. No, that that truck was not moving quite as fast as that truck is. I'll tell you that much. I really wanted him to do a Leslie Nielsen in Due South, uh, standing up, and you you know when he falls off his horse. Do you ever seen Due South about the Canadian yeah. Mounties? 
Mm, I don't know. It's about a Canadian Mountie in, I think, New York, like in, in New York. And Leslie Nielsen plays a plays his boss in one of the episodes, like his Canadian Mountie boss. Uh huh. And at one point, there's a, like a famous physical comedy moment where he falls off his horse and the screen is blank for a second. And then Leslie Nielsen pops up and goes, Taxi! <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted him to do one of those. <laughs> What uh, what's hitting the shield? It sounds like Zeiss lightning, right? But I guess because whatever oh. it is, it makes me think like keep the shield. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're about to uh, yeah, they're about to find out that climate change was a fraud all along. <laughs> Again, I'm jealous of this dystopia. They've done so much to combat climate change that it's fixed itself. Yeah. We've done nothing. We've done nothing. Less than nothing. Minus a million. <laughs> <laughs> he must have got a taxi back. Good point. How did he get back? Well, I gotta say, that Foley artist was was right on the money there. Yep. That was the exact moment that that glass dropped. I think maybe they had to update some of the special effects because you couldn't see the actors' faces because of all the blue light that's, like, <laughs> hitting them. That used to be red? I don't think it was all red. I'm willing to believe the shield was red. I don't think it was <laughs> pink light coming through the blinds. Oh. Look. It's all... <laughs> It Let's enjoy itself. the view, honey. We shouldn't have taken so much action against climate change. Wait, this is above the... Yeah. So the shield does not even totally cover Earth? Well, it's like the Death Star, you know, it's got that one vulnerability, which, you know, I'm, sure in, a, I'm sure in a later movie, they uh, retcon that it was intentional to leave that vulnerability in there. What are they on top of oh, K2 no, I'm forgetting. right now? I, although I'm forgetting, none of the future movies pick up this timeline. They're are they the top on top of, of K2? Where are they? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the cloud is there on their heads, so that's high. <laughs> I don't know how they got up there that easily. Well, there was a tunnel. <laughs> yes, a tunnel. Did he just say all roads lead to me? Clearly not the one they left you on. It's like a it's like a late Morrissey song. All roads lead to me. All roads lead to me. <laughs> That's too much blue light. That's <laughs> too much. Can't see what what's on screen. <laughs> Ow. That is the appropriate response. <laughs> I think the screenwriters were just tired of like having the dialogue, the villain dialogue Split. alternate between them. It's like, I just want to write one name. What a great establishing shot. Hey, by the way, dead. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Weren't you already here like a day ago? Just Couldn't like you've yeah, done you all like this then yesterday. 
you found all this out then anyway. <laughs> but you should try just wielding a circular blade it's much easier than learning how to use swords oh that's some good still action cute? in this because i spent centuries battling others in sword fights <laughs> You know what this movie needs right now? Clancy what? Brown. <laughs> ah. Be great if Iron said said Clancy. <laughs> <laughs> and he just comes in like what? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have you got ten dollars? <laughs> Yeah, theoretically, he could. Oh no, because they have to be joined with the gold liquid. So you covered your tracks, Highlander Two. Does a does the third sequel? Does it have a scientist looking at that pole, saying it was cut by a sword that was like with metal folded three hundred times? <laughs> we'll find out when we do all the Highlander movies, <laughs> including this one again. Yeah. I don't think I've seen any of the others. No, me neither. It was kind of anticlimactic. <gasps> yeah. It's real whimper for that character to go out on. There can be only one. Although, to be fair, Katana is never represented as someone who's successful at anything he tries to do. Right. So it's not really much of a come down. Yeah, see, that's the normal lightning strike after you kill someone. A couple seconds of uncomfortable <laughs> lightning. Now, that, that final duel didn't need to be in front of the ozone layer shield generator. <laughs> you know, it has nothing to do with that plot unless the movie says it does. It's Sean Connery's voice again. Yeah, helping out. He's like a like a pushy Obi-Wan Kenobi. What? This does not seem like something you could just stand in. Tiny satellites gone. Oh no. Out. How will we control this massive energy without the tiny satellite? <laughs> kind of looks the same, except the stars. Yeah, right? That would have it would have been a bit more dramatic a transition if it was daytime, I think. We've gone to night to night with a few stars. They're still keeping the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, except it's alive. not a full-on demon, <laughs> like a de like a Fantasia demon, like it was in Highlander. I didn't remember that. I was just like, yeah, but it is ten years later. Like the, they're still the, doing it. The video from Aha, uh, take on me. That's what it looked like. she going to bring up the dead wife who looks just like her? Yeah, he's full on vertigoing her. <laughs> Ramirez, will you shut up? <laughs> I'm sucking face. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. 
up into space. <laughs> but not to Zeist. Wow. So yeah, that ca- that scene, I guess, carried on and they went back to Zeist, the two of them. They did in the original? In the- yeah. Uh. Hmm. I want... <laughs> I wonder why the the uh, writers and directors of the next movie didn't want to pick up that thread. <laughs> Thank you, Sean Connery, for being in this movie for seven minutes. But what a seven minutes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I thought that Charlton Heston's like one scene performance in (laughs) Beneath the Planet of the Apes like spread out over about four scenes was as dispersed as you could get here he's literally like five seconds here five seconds there (laughs) 20 seconds here it looks like he's the star of the movie even though the screen time is probably as you say under five minutes (laughs) colon i know it is called the colon opera house the colon yeah. opera house and it's not the last time the credits will mention it either have we missed the have we oh we, oh yeah we've missed so you know what the the actor who plays one of those kryptonian council guys uh-huh it's still listed in the credits where they cut out any mention of zeiss as zeiss high justice <laughs> so they forgot to take that out of the credits. That's great. The guy who speaks, I assume. I assume. Council's decision is final. Sean Connery's hairdresser. He gets his own hairdresser. Yeah. Wow. He doesn't even get the chief hairdresser. <laughs> so it goes Sean Connery's hairdresser, chief hairdresser, hairdresser. I don't think it's very often you see two rows of credits. Maybe this is the updated special effects. They were like, let's get the credits <laughs> done quicker. Oh, hey, you know what it might be is that because this is the DVD release, it even has the making of listed on here. Oh, wow which is efficient. (laughs) The memory. I'm glad you're enjoying this. This fucking gold. (laughs) This is amazing. This is exactly the kind of song you expect. Yeah, absolutely. Right? You would be disappointed if you didn't get this kind (laughs) of song. If it was anything else, I'd be pissed. Is this somebody I'm supposed to know, by the way, or is this like a mystery man? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, the making of Highlander 2 in the credits. Directed and photographed by... Schillingford. I'm going to put that name in a script. <laughs> These are all the people who made the Red Shield blue. Yep. Oh, I missed the music. No, (laughs) it's coming. Okay. I don't know why they have that part before they do the music, but even the credits of this movie don't make literal sense. (laughs) So the look of the the colon colon. opera house (laughs) appears due to the strict requirement of Highlander 2 and does not represent the normal look of the opera house. Highlander 2 was shot on location in Argentina. Now it all Nothing in this movie is what it appears to be. <laughs> wow. This movie was filmed Ooh, entirely in Argentina. I haven't been paying enough mm-hmm. attention. What's the name of the song? Meredith Br- Brooks and Greg DeBells. No? Yeah. What's this called? One Breath Away? Yeah. 
Meredith Brooks and Greg DeBells, of course. You, you say so. Oh, fucking Lionsgate. I knew we're involved here somewhere. <laughs> Digital compositing. I think you're right, Mike. I think they made the, the pink shield blue. And put those statues in <laughs> from the planet. <laughs> 3D artists. Mm. Oh, look. Can you see that? Oh, is that what it used to look like? I believe so. Wow. Okay. I never I never didn't believe you. I just didn't think that everything that was <laughs> everything that was blue <laughs> blue in the movie was originally pink. <laughs> Well, oh, that what, is... what, what do you think? I think that movie's fun. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Is it a good movie or a bad movie? Uh, objectively, it's bad. Yeah. But it's just too much fun to care. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah. Um, but if you, you know, if you care th about writing and directing and acting, yeah, it's not good. You care about the elements of film. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and I, I absolutely, I absolutely agree that it's fun. Everyone looks like they're having fun. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, we kept saying throughout, it looks good. It does look good. It's There's good production like, value. The production values are great. Yeah. I kind of think of what you see what you see on screen is kind of appropriate for what the movie is. I think people were disappointed that that this is what Highlander became. Became, yeah, sure. They weren't judging it as a dystopian science fiction movie in its own right. Well, cuz think about it, what they did is they fucked with the mythology big time. So but I think a sequel has a right to do that. As a yeah, well, I'm just saying that I think that's probably a red line for huge fans of any given... Yeah, true. ...you know, property. Especially now. I mean, maybe this was the beginning of the end for, like... For, yeah, right. Not, not my not my McClouds. Yeah. <laughs> Which then is verified by future filmmakers who choose to ignore this movie completely mm -hmm. i mean where it ends up i i sympathize with wanting to just but how i mean how bad do you have to consider a movie to be to completely ignore it because we've seen examples of movies that are implicitly retconned by not being mentioned like the jaw jaws 3d where everyone's like well let's just not mention it but this is active. I mean, this is actively saying this didn't happen. Yeah, this is not canon, and that seems unfair to me. I get that there's, a, you know, it puts the person picking up the story in a predicament to end where they did. Yeah, but I feel like you could still reset things without retconning everything again, again, again. <laughs> the, the, right. not, exactly. not to mention the fact that you're doing it twice in two movies. Strong choices. I mean, wait, is this a kilt behind you? What's going on there? Oh no, this is my dystopian tartan. Okay, this is my my blue. Is that I the thought... shield? <laughs> That's that the, the shield. This is the shield here. Okay, and this is my dystopian tartan. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I I sort of think. And it's weird. I mean, maybe there's something also that's just peculiar to this series because I don't know if you know, I mean, you haven't said you haven't seen any of the other movies and neither have I, but I, I do know that uh, there's been problems with the canon of the of Highlander that, that, um, that continue into when they're trying to match the film series and the TV series. Apparently they had issues hmm. with that too. 
So the TV series created a whole new canon that the movies were different from. I only barely remember the TV series. It I don't was remember. on for seven years. Was it? Seven fucking Whoa. years. Oh! I couldn't, it said 92 to 99. I went, what the fuck? How did, <laughs> I know it was a different, I know it was a different time, but. Who was it? Seven seasons. That's as much as like Next Generation or. Yeah. It's a long fucking time. That's a lot of television. I I couldn't believe it, but I, I but the, you know those those things were working in different universes, and then I think one of the movies tried to bring those universes together, but in a similarly like muddy way that didn't quite didn't say either way whether it was canon or not. Uh, so huh. maybe it is just like this 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 franchise has a, has a bug up its ass about you know what's canon and what's not um interesting but it's 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 a strange I, it seems like a big over watching it now and given Wait. how enjoyable it is it seems like a big overreaction to erase it forever there's <laughs> so i was curious because i could i had no idea how many movies were in the series I see Highlander, Highlander 2, The Quickening, Highlander, The Final Dimension. That's right. It's always funny when we, you know, final. And final, end, yeah. And when you blast. have the word final, it's never yeah. final. The Final Dimension, followed by Highlander 4, Endgame. You're right. And now I'm seeing two movies released in 2007, <laughs> Highlander, The Search for Vengeance, and Highlander, The Source. Is one of those for the TV series, maybe? Uh, my that would be my guess without knowing. But they wow. definitely they definitely had problems integrating the two because there were two different protagonists. But there was oh I want I should have looked this up beforehand. But I think there's at least one movie where it's the guy from the TV show and Christopher Lambert in the same thing. Gotcha. Um. So. I don't know. It's by it's, you know, it's by its nature. It's obviously something a kind of unwieldy property. Yes, but it's I don't. Yeah, I wonder. Like maybe the first movie is more to blame than we think because they do leave things. Um. They leave it open enough for you to do something as boldly stupid as this. <laughs> And you know the original Highlander. It's no, it's no prize pig. It, it, it's, it's a in its own way. It's, it's Come got on, a lot, that it's, movie is so fun. But it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of bad movie qualities too. I think we misremember because of Queen and Connery that. I mean, I think it just has low budget syndrome, doesn't it? For the most, like the stuff in New York looks it, low budget. And there's some weird stuff like all, like most of the movies filmed with a fisheye lens. There is fisheye stuff in that movie. I do remember that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but I like that movie too. Uh, I just I don't think the disparity between this and the first one is as big as people is as remember. People, yeah, right. I don't know where the series goes from here. As I say, we'll find out at some point. We'll find out someday. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's it's you know I I was wary. I thought well we wouldn't do this on a watch along because it's an official sequel, but. It, it's actually, but this one we watched is not. It's not. No, I'm not it's, sure we're going to be able to watch the one we're supposed to watch. Yeah, because it's is uh, yeah as yet uh, un, unavailable. I mean, we, you could try and track it down, and uh, yeah. maybe it, maybe they'll they'll uh, put out a special Blu-ray with both versions. But they say that about every movie that's lost, and it's never it's never. Right. I mean, I, I believe that. It's a lot to do with the fact that uh, the the directors and producers were embarrassed about the alien stuff and wanted to take it out wow. and didn't want people to know that they did it. But but you did can... it. <laughs> yeah, and you can you know it's. I had this a similar experience of watching the the uh, the Godfather Coda. I just watched um, that the other night. 
Yeah, intro. Well, I it had, I, it had been so long since I've seen the third one. Yeah, I could tell that it was a better movie, but but like the movie still has all the same problems it had before. I agree, and but and I think you know when when you don't have any new footage or different footage. Yeah. All you can do is detract from from what you have. Yeah. They and put that that very first scene is different, right? Because that was like in the middle of the movie before, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think that actually was smart. Like putting that at the beginning of the movie, now you know what this movie's about. <laughs> but well, yeah, but you know, what about that 15 minute recap of Godfather One and Two that used to be there? Right. Little boy penis awful, scene. By awful. the way, I was on a walk the other day and true to form listening to our own podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, you were complaining about the Harry Potter series and about giving somebody what? who's. I don't who's, remember that. Somebody who's I don't coming remember in. complaining about Harry Potter. What are you talking to, about? To the second movie with no knowledge. Because you're the only person in the world that would come into the second movie not having seen the first and no knowledge. And yeah. you were upset that they didn't catch you up in any way. And I can't believe that I did not say you were, you were, you wanted Harry, you wanted Harry Potter little boy penis scene. That's what you wanted. You wanted a little catch up. You want a little Superman action. Yeah, but for entirely unrelated reasons. Um, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> but that's a good. That's a good point. I, I. It's good that you bring that. Up. I actually think. I'm just saying I missed a joke opportunity, and I can't believe I did. <laughs> well, there you go. You, you you got it in. So. Um, yeah. But would God. here's a question. Yeah. Would. Would it be better to watch this without having seen Highlander? Yeah, would you well, think it was? Would you think it was as bad a movie if if you weren't coming in from Highlander? Well, I, I because no. you could accept everything as just yeah. true as true. <laughs> so, and not be going. Hang on. Yeah. Right. They've they they didn't meet. All the questions I asked. All the questions I asked. Like, how does he know what the fuck the police are? You wouldn't you be still, asking. You still wouldn't think it was the best example of actually. This I guess kind you could movie. still ask that question. But... You still wouldn't think it was the best example of this kind no. of movie. No, but you. I don't think you. I think you would. There think wouldn't it was be so much vitriol movie. for the movie if that first movie didn't it's exist. So it's so weird to like. It's so weird to me that I don't know. Maybe I'm very superficial. But, <laughs> but certainly I, you like Batman and Robin. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I, I'm watching this movie, and you know, the there's money on screen, and it's like the move. The movie is like visually really works. It's stupid. visually it does. It, it, it's stupid, but it's it's knowingly stupid. Like it, it's it's. It's it's purposely scraping the bottom of the barrel. It's not going for the high-minded version of anything. No. Like really, but really it's like it's it's like getting down and dirty. And for some reason that that, that approach kind of charms me more than uh a movie Most that people? takes <laughs> What do you say? Most people? Well, yeah. <laughs> Any you know any corporeal I'm, I'm, human but yeah, yes I'm, I'm totally on your side this time <laughs> it's interesting i was expecting a much worse movie i think i even remembered a much worse movie it's funny isn't it like, and i'm surprised you know i remembered sean connery i remembered him landing somewhere where you were like wait what the fuck and i remembered this thing with the neck I can't believe I didn't remember that it was in the middle of a production of Hamlet. Yeah. Cause that's brilliant. That's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's like, if you're willing to, it's about will, you know, going back to a theatrical term, it's about willing suspension of disbelief. If you're willing to ignore the fact that there's absolutely no reason he should be in the movie at all. Right. You can have a fun time watching him. Say my name. 
<laughs> but also, and also, you know, like, also, he he doesn't have a complex about being in the movie. No, he's enjoying himself, yeah. and that goes a long way. It's yeah. like, you know, other characters are going, "You shouldn't be here. Why are you here?" But he's not. He's like, I got paid he's just to like, be here. Deal with it. I'm here. It's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna be. Time. I'm gonna be decapitated in like ten minutes, and then you can get back on with the movie. <laughs> Um, so it's 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 in, you know it's it's interesting what just to compare what I what irks me <sighs> in cinema in franchise cinema specifically versus versus what irks other people is is very it is very different. Like I, I don't I'm not you what know I'm does not, irk I'm, you? Well, I'm not. The, the, I mean, certainly I don't want to. I don't feel like. Because sometimes what, you say things irk you, and then you like it in another movie. The thing that you well, say bothers I'm you. A, I'm a, a, a hypocrite and a liar. We all know that. <laughs> um, but I feel like I feel like ca- you know, canon policeman is not the role I want to play as as someone like watching. A piece of media. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like that's so many people's go-to. Do you go-to, think? Uh, do you think the just public? Mine. Do you think the public in general should back the fuck off canon policing more? <sighs> or are you like to each their own? It's a good question. I mean, I'm. Scanning, you know, I'm I'm trying to think of occasions where I probably said the opposite, <laughs> and I guarantee you there've been a few on this podcast. But I don't think I've ever gone as far as like that's not my whatever. Like yeah, right. And that was my big defense with Batman and Robin. Is like yeah, it's not. Uh, you know, it's not. It's not Tim Burton. It's not Tim Burton, and it's not. You know, Adam West or whatever, whatever. But it's it's. <sighs> If it if it lives in itself enough, I I don't mind. This is to me a movie that lives in itself. It does. Yeah, you're right. It's not. I mean, aside from the the recreation of shots from Citizen Kane and Gone with the Wind, uh, <laughs> that that kind of loftiness. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it it's a. Uh, I mean, yeah, all that, all the, all the kind of references to better movies, kind of go against. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just like saying we're a really good bad movie. We're like the Citizen Kane of bad movies. Well, that's my other look, question. Look, we got money. <laughs> Here's yeah. your money. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, 1991, a 30 million dollar budget. That's like that. That's a good chunk of money. And they spent every penny of it on this movie, I think. It's kind of weird because it's in... It doesn't look cheap. Oh, my God. It looks really good. Yeah. Um. Because it's kind of... Because it's sort of... You expect this to be the cheap sequel and Highlander to be more expensive. Right. But actually, Highlander around, is... Yeah. Highlander's produced by the kings of cheap sequels, the Canon group, Canon Film Group. Yeah. So you get a weirdly a sort of different experience, even though overall the quality and the ideas and everything in Highlander is, is better. Uh, Highlander 2, you're always like, well, you know, the production values are always amazing. Um, the content and <laughs> the quality of what we're seeing is not always amazing. Right. Um, so it's weird that it goes in that order. Like I could, uh, like I assumed this was a canon film, but it's not. This is a legit big budget production. Oh man! So it's it's really it's really int- it's really um, interesting mm-hmm. uh, phenomenon uh, to follow. I would say. Good times. Yeah, I had fun. I had way more fun than I even thought I was going to. I thought I was. Now we can add it to the side effect list. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, I thought I was gonna. I thought I was gonna regale in 
chopping this movie up into bits. And instead, I was enjoying enjoying it. And when you and when you do feel the urge to do that, it kind of it invites you to do that, I think. By like just being the lowest common denominator, like, you know, where you can predict lines like last stop or showtime. Right. Yeah, right. Like I don't know if it's the if it's the reason we have those stereotypes or whether it's indulging in those stereotypes. Like I'm not. Well, so I don't I, that, yeah. So my question that I was going to say to you a second a sec ago was, uh, how deliberate is the badness to you? Do you think this is a happy accident, or do you think they were going for it? Uh, I think I there was. I think this is an almost an unofficial comedy sequel. Mm -hmm. It's kind of in the same territory for me as Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. Man, you mentioned that movie a lot. You like that movie. Well, it was the same the same deal where it's kind of it, it's a comedy sequel that just won't let it won't market itself as a comedy sequel. But actually the idea of remaking the original movie as pure comedy goes back, you know, as far back as like the 1920s. You know, mm -hmm. it's like an established sequel tradition, but we're just a bit snotty about it. So I think it's definitely got that. Um, I think it's knowingly trashy. Okay. But I think once you get into the level of how you tell a story and, and how you deal with the mythology, it's inept. So I don't think it's deliberately trying mm -hmm. to be inept. Correct. But I think I think well, it, what knows, you have, like, it knows how what trash it is. I think I mean like, Connery violence... literally winks at the screen at one point, right before his death. And then I mean you, you know when have... you talk about a nod and wink to the audience, he actually <laughs> winks at the audience. He, he does that. And, and nods. You, you can't have porcupine men wearing <laughs> goggles on fucking hoverboards and not say this is pretty silly fun don't you think <laughs> you know? yeah i think i mean you 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 pointed out you know how how ultra violent it is and obviously you know there's a lot of overblown stunt action in here like that the you know that scene where cars and trucks and buildings just explode one. I think the other. directorially, this is very interesting, actually. The idea that it could be as violent and gory and like body horror as it is, yeah. but have it still has a comic tone while that's happening. Yeah. That's that's usually that doesn't that doesn't mesh. Usually you're gonna Agreed. fuck something up in that. Yeah. Um and it may, you know, it, it makes the original look kind of restrained mm -hmm. right. because, you know, I like even the scene where he's being, like you never see people being, you see like one decapitation in the original Highlander. You don't even see it when it happens to Ramirez. Mm -hmm. um, it's just Clancy that you see. The rest is all off screen. Um, and, you even know, the like, first guy. I can't parking remember. Lot? I don't think you see that. I think you see the oh. result, but you don't see the actual cut. I think they're right. saving. I think they're purposely saving yeah, you're it. You're right. They're probably saving it. Um, and you don't see much blood either. It's all like, mm -hmm. like even that that scene, which I remembered as being really violent, where he's being repeatedly stabbed in a duel. There's no blood in that. Mm. Whereas here, it's like, you know that that where they get machine gunned by those prison guards. That is, duel scene's really funny. <laughs> It's brutal. Yeah. But he's uh, drunk, so. It's and it's the same gag, you know, it's the, well, gag. Yeah. It's the same shtick, but done in a, in a purposefully more trashy way. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for that. And it's another point of distinction. You know, you don't want to see the same movie again. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, that's the, 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 uh, the eternal dilemma of like, where do you balance it out? Like how much, how much do you give of the original? How much yeah. do you want to get away from it? And obviously, a lot of people thought that this was a step too far. Um, well, yeah, clearly. But looking back at it... Uh, but you know, right think, now, right now, we're like Jim Carrey in The Cable Guy. <laughs> we're like, I saw Waterworld, you know, four times in the theater. I don't know what everybody's problem was. I think it's great. Yeah, I... I 
I think that too. Kind yeah. of really. I'll even watch The Postman. I love Kevin Costner. Um, <laughs> I'll maybe draw the line of message in a bottle. Okay, that's where I set. That's where I. Uh, uh, but it, you know, it, yeah, Postman, not great. It's not. No, but it's not. <laughs> We're not really helping our case here by mentioning uh, other true. famously bad movies that we don't mind. <laughs> but it's interesting this came out the same year as Hudson Hawk, and I don't know if I if I got to say it on, on the podcast, but that, that's like, they both got similar qualities in terms of, you know, the perception mm -hmm. of them as bad movies, but, you know, but when scrutinized, there's a lot to like about both of them. Right. Um, and a lot that that is like, I mean, certainly with Hudson Hawk, you know, there were two or three scenes which are like really good, like regardless of not even enjoying it as a bad movie. It's like, oh, it's a really good set piece or that's a really mm -hmm. good whatever. And here I kind of feel the same. Like, you know, I wouldn't change anything about the Sean Connery in the Hamlet theater. No. Scene. No, or any of his forty-five minute journey. To... Oh yeah, like him, him and the him and the tailor shop. So it's like you know, this movie really does have its have its moments. Absolutely. Um, so it's interesting that, but like this is in the same year, you get two movies which are um a kind of maligned by reputation, but are are not by no means unwatchable. Without as much cause as people say <laughs> will you feel that about hudson hulk too i know you just released oh, an episode yeah. on this that's that's one of my all-time favorite bad movies and hmm. chu hated it and oh i, I know her, i hate her for hating it it's ridiculous yeah and again it's just like it's, it's you can't argue you can't argue again i mean like hudson hawk's different because it's not a follow-up so yeah it's harder to argue against people who don't like it because they are judging it for what it is yeah and what it was supposed to be um whereas we're judging it against well not only a not only a a, a big uh, like a big pop culture movie, but one that has attained cult status, even by the time that this movie comes out, mm -hmm. that it, you, you, that's hard to play off. You well, have to do I like saying... you have to do like an Empire Strikes Back level quality, or no yeah. one will ever take you seriously. You can't do even less than that right. for people to like it, and that's crazy. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a crazy high standard. That's a that's a that's a huge bar. Yeah. <laughs> That's... And that's where you get into like you know the 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 last Jedi territory. We like you're like it's good enough, you know. But because people are a can you know because of canon the canon police, you know, have already dissected it. It's like it's like it's good enough. It's got problems, but it's good enough. I have <laughs> more problems. I have more problems with that movie than. Don't say. Wait. It. Wait. Which one is that? The second one. Yeah, I have more problems with the second one than... Oh, f okay. Well, that blew my... Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that another time. We but, will, um, but... It's no Attack of the Clones, I'll give you that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> but any, you know, like, I, like... Just using the example of The Last Jedi, like, I went and saw it and came out going, eh, things I liked, things I didn't like. Not bothered that things are not where they're supposed to be based on your you know appreciation of the other movies no yeah doesn't, no, it, doesn't, it's not it doesn't even give me a sec it doesn't no no point am i thinking who's not the same character that's not how i build the character up in my mind right so i i think i agree with mark hamill that that's not really the place i'd like to see that character go but i wasn't he, so he pissed just wanted he just wanted to be like a hero again. the hero yeah he, but he, even even though some even though right re Jones, but I did not find it offensive or anything no. like that. What I found and offensive, secretly secretly he's better at that Luke than the real Luke <laughs> because that's what he's like. Well, my big problem with that movie is they take forty five minutes to go to fucking Star Wars Monte Carlo just to have it not matter at all. Yeah, that's the fifty percent of the movie. I, I that's, could happily that's an do abomination. It is that, abomination. That's You're poor right. filmmaking. Yeah. So, 
that was my big problem. But, but yeah, exactly, poor filmmaking. So that's what that's what I'm judging. Like, is it good? Is it bad? I'm not. I'm not thinking. Well, does that take us in a direction that gets away from the original vision of? No, no, never. It's like it never crosses my mind. Otherwise, I would just rewatch that if I wanted to see that again. So you're saying, like. Jaws 2, if Chief Brody gets sees the picture and he's like, that's a shark. Nah, fuck it. <laughs> and he just goes home and does nothing about it. You're okay with that? Well, I don't like that movie, but because it's not a <laughs> it, it's not a well-made movie. Um, but uh, and I don't have but I don't have one. the same reverence for Jaws you have. So True. I, but I think you know, it's the cut in the head off the snake metaphor. Once again, it's like, and here they're actively doing it by ignoring things that were clearly established in the original movie. They're, That's true. I mean, and you, they're decapitating. Well, there it all comes back full circle. <laughs> they decapitated Highlander and they made Highlander to the quickening. Well done. That's a good place to leave it. And made him old for some reason. <laughs> maybe you're right maybe i missed it but i was listening out for that line and nowhere is it said now i will go old like all you other humans or anything like that well, i have to go back and watch it now damn it i may be wrong we'll find out all right well ladies and gentlemen that's it yeah highlander 2 the quickening what is it rogue edition <laughs> Renegade version. Damn it. Renegade version. And by the way, I, I didn't want to I didn't want to say this, but they don't even refer to it as the quickening anymore. Ugh. Which is weird because that came from the first movie. Didn't that they did wanna... come from the first movie, yeah. So you think they wanna but I guess I don't I don't know why they took the quickening out. Interesting. They obviously All right. thought that was one of the problems. <laughs> You know what's wrong with this movie? This movie, the, the title. <laughs> Isn't that a Simpsons quote too? You know what's wrong with this movie? The t the title. <laughs> That's great. All right, for Tom Stewart of Lonesome Whistle Productions, I am Michael Schantz of the How Dare You Awards. Thank you for joining us for yet another watch along on the Everything Sequel Podcast. Tom's going to have something for us for next month. I don't know what it is, but I'm I looking forward to it. <laughs> Look out, be, May. I shall be on my way and leave you to converse with your skull. <laughs> Perfect. So long, everybody.